Representative Abler, thank you for sitting down and letting us talk to you. Oh, it's great to be here today. My first question is, can you describe your district that you represent and tell us how you are similar to your district? Yeah, actually I lived there my whole life. It's Anoka and most of the city of Ramsey. And it's, it used to be uh, rural and we still have a couple farms, but mostly we grow lots, building lots, and they've converted over. So Ramsey's a bedroom community. They're trying to conjure up a downtown, but it's a slow process. Anoka is the county seat. And so it's always been a center of hustle and bustle. Whereas Ramsey has a low daytime population, and high nighttime population. Anoka's population probably triples in the daytime. They come to the government center and different businesses and so on. And, and so it's pretty much working class. It's just regular Minnesota people that's uh, kind of blue collar. Even the, the businessmen and the doctors are kind of like regular, just blue collar kind of people. And they're really earthy and normal and, and uh, People have a partisan view, but at the end they decide to work and f get things done. And they, the city council squabbles, but they, they work it out. And, and that's how I was raised and how I've tried to model that being here in the legislature, to solve problems, focus on the issue, not on the personality, and try to accomplish something. Now can you describe your occupation outside of the legislature? Sure, I've got a couple jobs. I'm a chiropractor in my day job. Done that for 35 years now. It doesn't seem possible. Time goes. And I also I, um, manage some, uh, own and manage some commercial property. We have 25 small businesses in there. And so in terms of being in touch with the people and Main Street and all, I, I know what it's like. I know how hard they have a hard time making their rent. And I see business uh, cycles come and go. And so I don't have to read a survey or read the Wall Street Journal to know how small business is doing, in, at least in Minnesota. And so I fix my own roofs when I can and repair what I can and get calluses on my fingers. And so it keeps me down to earth. And so some people just do legislator as their job or a community organizer or something. And, and this keeps me kind of, I have to work under the laws that I help pass and have to buy my own post-it notes and have to meet the payroll. And so it kind of keeps me, keeps it real for me. Well, what legislation have you worked on in the past that you're most proud of? Well, it's been 15 years already, which doesn't seem possible either. Time goes by, you blink and poof. Done a lot of work in the healthcare arena, obviously, but a lot of work with disabilities and the care for people who are unable to care for themselves. A lot of senior citizen work, uh, a lot of education, and um, uh, some in the transportation and some environmental kind of things. Those are probably my, I think my four main ones. I probably forgot some, but I'm. Uh, a lead on the healthcare side with health reform and I try to spend a lot of time improving what laws are out there even who's ever in charge if Democrats are in charge or Republicans I try to be in the middle of it I've never been in situations where there was we had all one party of my side running things I've always had to work with the other side and um, a lot of good work has come out of that and when you work with both sides and you get to a good agreement then nothing gets repealed when the other side takes over because they already agreed to what you're doing. It's gone too far that it's one side try to blast the other and who can take the advantage and pass a law you know they hate and they spend their next time trying to fix it and undo it. And, and so I'm really proud of how I've gone about my work and the reforms I've done. And if you focus on what government's supposed to do, like look after the people who can't look after themselves, people that are born developmentally disabled or born missing some part of their body or people as they get older, the seniors who we all decide we should make sure that they're secure and squared away in their housing and in their settings. Um, there's a lot of good work to do there and very important, very expensive. We spent a lot of money on that. And education is a constitutional duty. And Minnesota's an innovator. I've been part of a lot of that. We founded a charter school before I came here. And big. Uh, big on choice in education. And, 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 but if you make sure that the point is that the disabled are cared for and the seniors are squared away and the kids are educated, that cuts through a lot of politics. And so it's one thing to say you want to do something, it's something else to actually see a benefit to the end user, which is the disabled person, the senior, or the, the, the student. All, all the while remembering the money does, doesn't fall out of the sky. It comes from you and everybody. And we better spend it wisely. And those would probably be the hallmarks of my work. Now, 15 years ago, 
What was it that made you decide that you wanted to run as a representative? Uh, in chiropractic, we've been active a lot just to help people have the right to see a chiropractor. And so that's kind of the history. So I've always been active about that just to give a level playing field. And we got involved in doing the charter school and there was education piece that came around that. And a vacancy occurred and I thought, well, that would be something that would be, I could make a difference at a higher level. And then just being local and doing my own work. And that actually has come true. I've done a lot of, when I look back, if I, where this, this was my last minute to be a legislator. I'd look back and I'd be very pleased with what I've been able to accomplish. A lot of it's going to last and will make it, the people are better for it. And you hope after that much time that something good happens. People think it's glamorous to be a legislator. And it's, there's a little tiny minor bit of glamour and a little prestige, but um, not much. It's mostly work and you mostly lose your other business when you're here and, so, and you lose time with your family and, and so you got to really want to come and make a difference and so, so the differences you make wind up actually being quite expensive personally. My last question is if you could go back and visit any time, what time would you go back and visit? I think I'd like to visit now. It would be really cool to have uh, the Back to the Future time machine and go see different things. And but I'm really content to be here today. I think I've had to wrestle with that. You know, I'm 59 years old all of a sudden. Our kids are mostly grown. Our oldest son, our youngest son turned 15 yesterday. So he's on his way to being an adult, especially he thinks that. And so I've had to immerse myself in the present. The past, you look back and you're like, oh, I wish I would have done something different. I wish I made a mistake. I angered a friend. I made a wrong decision. I can't change that. And tomorrow is coming, tomorrow. And so if I would preoccupy myself with tomorrow, then I'm no good today. So I have today. I'm enjoying very much being here in these few minutes with you. I'm uh, enjoying my family today as they grow and enjoying the opportunity to serve today.